is about our decision to install a Wave 3 heater in our A-liner. Yeah, we looked at Mr. Heater and this one, but we chose this one partly because they said it would t use less propane and it had a lower uh, BTU output and the inside of our A-liner isn't very big. And one thing I like about it so far is that it's only about four inches deep, so it won't stick out into the room very much and people might not get as burned or likely to get burned on it. And um, the, the thing I'm not super excited about right now is was the price, but hopefully it's going to be worth it. The wave heaters could be either be hung on the wall or put on legs on and sat on the floor. Here are the legs and you can see this is the Wave 3 heater, and that's how long the legs would be. These legs are for all the Wave, wave heaters, and I think we're not going to use them. They're just too long. They take up too much room in the A-liner. There just isn't very much room in that little teeny tiny house. There's definitely no room for this on the floor in the A-liner or on the counters, really, unless you put down the cooktop, which has a metal top, and that would be great. Um, the only problem is sometimes you need to be able to cook and run the heater at the same time. So what I'm going to do is we've decided to take a little risk and hang the heater from one of the walls, to actually two spots, so we can move it around um, with some wood in the back on the three holes. I'd just like to remind everyone watching this video that before you attempt this unconventional way of installing the Wave 3 heater, it was not recommended by Camco. This is not in their instructions. This is our own little idea of what we're going to do in our trailer. Um, you could end up dying following what we're doing. It's not stable, really. You could bang into it, fall into it, get burned. It could fall off um, if you don't connect it up correctly or you know aren't careful. So this is just our little method for installing this thing in our in, in our A-liner and you can judge for yourself what you what you'd like to do with with your trailer. <laughs> we used our best judgment in designing this type of installation so we we hope it's going to work. Propane to me is one of those things that seems really safe until suddenly boom you're you're injured. Uh, unlike being in a car you can kind of picture uh, hitting something or getting in an accident while you're moving, but this is you know like the silent stalker kind of a thing so also we decided to pay for installation of, of a quick connect gas line in our kitchen area um, If we knew how to do gas lines, we would have done it ourselves, but we just really don't know how to work with copper and propane gas lines and um, Yes, it was kind of expensive to get that done. So that's another cost of, of doing what we're doing. Um, one thing someone else could do if you wanted, and I've seen other people do it, is run the propane rubber hose through through one of the windows from the barbecue quick connect on the outside of the trailer. So that would have that would have been a solution. Um, and also that forces you to leave a window open, which is what uh, Camco wants you to do with their heater. Um, I guess we felt like this was just more convenient for us, so we went ahead and had them put the Quick Connect under the kitchen sink. Here's, here's where they put it. And excuse my stuff, but it's, it's under there. Right there. And then they also drilled a hole in the side of the cabinet and put a plastic grommet around that so we can just leave the hose connected up. And of course, the source of the gas line is the elect is the gas cooktop. It just comes across here and across and then across the behind the front of the cabinet. This is my dry run. I'm going to first stick the bolt in the hole in the back of the heater. Then uh, on the outside of that, I'll have this smaller washer. Then I'll have the wood, which isn't here yet. The uh, chain next. Then the big washer, and then a nut tightened down. And here are the parts I used. Next, you measure the plywood that goes in the back. I'm using 3 8 inch plywood because I'm uh, wanting to add some more wood in one spot. You'll see why later. Uh, the wall is not going to be flat behind this, so I have to add something to push it out. Um, 
So I'm just tracing exactly the same size as the heater because you need to have room to swivel the elbow for the gas line right here. So just to be safe, they also say they don't want any combustible materials within a certain distance of the sides and the front and the top and the bottom. So um, the, just the back is, they say you can have combustible materials. So that's, that's how I'm going to interpret that. Just keep it the same size as the heater. square I hate to say but it's good enough for camping. Hopefully my husband won't look at it. I'm going to cut six one by two pieces to glue and screw into the back of the heater. Here's the back of the heater um, at the moment. Uh, I've got this hinged hook and a rigid T metal with bolts and wood screws. And these are bolts, three bolts through the heater holes on the heater. And it's going to hang on this hook here that I uh, screwed into the aluminum on the A liner. And this particular section right here does not hit anything when it's folded down and on the road. So that's why I can uh, screw some aluminum attachment right here. And this is going to hang sort of like this, and, uh, but I have to make some more modifications to the wood in the back so it doesn't hang cockeyed. So I'm going to prop the back out so that it's more like that and angled up. They want it angled up like the legs. Here are the parts that were used. Here's another shot of the back of the heater um, with the plywood attached. I'm sorry, my garage is such an incredible mess. Um, this was really a three-person job, and I just want to mention it because the, one of the hardest things about this project is um, these holes in the back of the heater, the bolts that we used actually were hard to get in. You had to angle them to work them through the hole and then you could easily drop the bolt down into the heater and then it would be really difficult to get out. I lost one down in there and luckily it shook out but uh, we had to do a two-person job here where we, one person person would hold two of the bolts with needle nose pliers while the other one put put the wood on and then we would put the uh, washer and then and then the the nut and screw the nut down. And Once the nut was on then we were home free. We didn't have to worry about the bolt falling back inside the heater. These are one inch bolts here and these are um, three quarter inch bolts and then these are just wood screws. I'm going to use these drywall screws to attach the very first two pieces of wood to the plywood because I don't want to have to take all that off the back of the heater again. <laughs> so I'm just going to attach these because they happen to just fit perfectly and still grab the plywood but not hit the heater. Apply the glue. Okay, I've got my first row of 1x2s screwed and glued onto the plywood. For my next two backing pieces, I ended up gluing and nailing with finishing nails um, because I was having trouble with the wood splitting, so I tried to nail it off grain. Now I'm going to attach the two pieces I just nailed to the piece that was already set on the plywood. Using these two inch screws, I'm going to drill first so that there's no splitting. Um, and as probably all of you know, but I'll mention, you need to pick a drill bit that's slightly smaller diameter than the um, size, the diameter of your screw. Um, I'm, this is not a structural support, so I'm not too worried about how, how tight it fits. Just want to hold it together. Okay, here it is hanging, a little bit cockeyed. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, I guess. <laughs> With the back wood supports, um, holding it off the wall. Next, I'm going to determine our secondary hanging location over the cooktop because when we take a shower, we have to have the other location covered up with a shower curtain. So 
Um, we're going to hang it up here instead of putting it on the cooktop because we also need to use the cooktop to heat the hot water and it would be too hard to move, pick up a hot heater and put it down on here and move things around when they're hot. So we're just going to um, hang it somewhere like this. And I picked this, look, this altitude because the instructions to the wave heater say it has to be 18 inches or lower from the ceiling. So you may be wondering why we don't just leave it hanging here over the cooktop all the time, and I did think about that, but I'm concerned that the heat from cooking plus the heat from this heater going right here together might damage the fiberglass foam ceiling here. I'm not quite sure. The other concern is cooking. I'm not sure how hot it would make us if, you know, if we have the heater turned on and we're cooking and all the heat is blasting at us from right here. The instructions say that uh, other items should be set 30 inches away from the front of the heater, and this right here is, I don't know, 24 inches. So I think it would get fairly hot if we had this hanging here all the time. So I think most of the time when we're not using the shower, we'll hang it on the shower location, and then when we need to take a shower, we'll hang it up here. So like I did in the first installation, I'm going to hang it with this rope loop hanger, 9 16 inch from Home Depot and these sheet metal screws, number 10, 3 quarter inch from Home Depot, and this metal drill bit from Home Depot. Okay, we got the hanger up there, and the heater is hanging, but you can kind of see it's sloped. It's sloping in a bad way. We need to have it angled out a little bit more this way at the bottom so that the heat is all the heat is rising and none of it's going back into the heater. So I think I'll be adding a little more wood in the back. All right, this is the back of the heater. I'm not extremely proud of the way this worked out, but I had to add this extra wood so I could put an extra piece of slide in it, extra piece of wood in and out in the back to put it in the location over the um, cooktop. We're just sliding a piece of wood in the back like that and then we hang it up. Here it is in place over the cooktop with the wood in the back. The piece of wood just kind of, it still wobbles, but at least the angle is is okay now. It's it's angled up just a slight bit like the legs on the unit were intended to do. And that's where we have it when we're taking a shower. I wanted to mention when we are on the road, I was very concerned about the Wave 3 being damaged by all the jostling, and we wanted to leave it connected, the gas line connected, um, under the sink. So we decided that we would wrap it up in this thick piece of foam with a piece of fabric and tie some string around it, which I'm sure someone else could come up with a much more elegant solution. Um, maybe I'll think of something later, but it seems to be working for our purposes. I just put it down on the floor when we're driving, um, with a lot of cushioning around it so that it doesn't get jostled that much. And it's kind of here, you know, on the floor by the, sorry about our stuff here, that's our stuff. But anyway, we just put it on the floor down here by the kitchen sink. And so far, it seems to be working fine. We put it face down with the foam down. Okay, here's the heater all bundled up, ready for travel. And we just pack a bunch of stuff around the sides to keep it from moving around. The foam is on the floor and it's like a nice little cushiony bed for the heater.